Welcome, uh, councillors. Please welcome to the um, extraordinary council meeting on Tuesday, the 17th of November. Welcome to the, yourselves, the councillors, staff, the media, and the public at home who are listening in. Uh, any items? I'll call for apologies. We are all here, so there is none. Extraordinary business. I know of none. Uh, declarations of interest. None. We'll move on to the items to be discussed. Number four, governance structure and the 2021 meeting schedule. Um, Hamish, you'll have this one. Uh, we've got to where we are when we uh, commenced council last year. We set up a structure and we said we would review it after one year and that one year is up and we have reviewed it. And um, so we've come up with an alternative system of what we have been used to, uh, which is being proposed here today. So it's open for discussion, debate, see what we move to. So there's a report in front of you, councillors. Hamish, anything further to add or do you like questions? The only thing I, I would add, um, Mr Mayor, is that the recommendations in front of you um, reflect uh, the <coughs> Um, council workshop on this matter, uh, which was based in large part around the survey of councillors and the strengths and weaknesses of the current structure, uh, and the proposal to abolish uh, this current standing committees with, um, with the exception of a refocus for audit risk and finance, uh, was generally regarded as a, um, a positive move. Uh, and it was based on councillors uh, and um, staff experience through the COVID lockdown, where we found um, the connection and the regularity of council meetings um, on a more regular basis than the six weekly cycle um, uh, met with a number of, um, had, a, had a number of positive uh, attributes to it. So this uh, recommendation uh, does reflect now that um, thinking and work that we have previously had. Thank you, Hamish. Just one question or comment. On page 7, number 23 and 24, we talk about portfolios, and it was discussed at our workshop that um, uh, we may want portfolio leads, and um, this here is not setting them up today if it's passed, but looking to, um, if we want look at the future of a portfolio lead and what that will look like. So. Yes, the, 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 um, the concept of portfolio leads uh, makes sense. Uh, the, the issue for us to get right um, and to give some careful thought to is the detail of what that means, what is the actual terms of reference or the job description of a portfolio lead. Uh, and we, we felt that we could do some further work on that uh, and if the concept of a portfolio lead in general is accepted uh, and the moving to more regular councils and less committee based um, meeting schedule, then the detailed work on the portfolio lead um, can can follow the, um, the policy decision today. Okay, and um, number 16, talking about audit and risk standing committee would, would stay, yeah. audit and risk but drop the finance. Um, what decision making powers would that committee have, audit and risk? Uh, we will look at that in terms of refined terms of reference, um, but our previous audit and risk uh, committee was largely based on um, recommending uh, any uh, matter uh, to council for final decision. So I think you could assume that our proposal would be um, primarily based on a recommending type committee as opposed to an actual decision making one. The, the, there's two strong reasons to continue with a risk and, and finance committee. Uh, one is um, uh, the Office of the Auditor General uh, is a, a very, very strong believer in that uh, structure to focus council councillors' attention on uh, risk and financial matters. Uh, and secondly, it, it allows for independent uh, membership of that committee. Uh, and we, we currently have one independent member and would um, propose to continue with that. And again, that brings expertise uh, and advice from outside of the um, council system to both hold to account and to um, give us a perspective that we uh, perhaps wouldn't otherwise have. So that's the reason for continuing with the Risk and Finance Committee. Yep, great. 
Uh, councillors have questions first, and then we'll have, um, once the move has been second has been got, we'll go and debate. debate. So any questions? Councillor McMillan, question? I can make it into a question. Um, <laughs> it was number 21 about the Methven Community Board six-week the meeting cycle, so they had a meeting on um, the 9th of November, and I just want to know that if it was noted that they were happy with the six <coughs> weekly. Um, so yeah. that turned into a question. Yeah, yeah I have been notified that um, the Methven Community Board will want to stay on the, the six weekly cycle. Yes. yes. Yeah, and I was going to make mention of that um, yeah. in the recommendation, but, yeah. um, but it, it is noted it's in the report, so Thank they've you. confirmed that. That's yeah. Right. Okay, councillors, no further questions. Someone like to um, move the recommendations. We could probably take them <coughs> from one to seven. Or, was there any questions around the meeting schedule first? Does anyone want to discuss the meeting schedule, which you will have? And it is, uh, we've got the main meetings in, obviously. There's a lot of gaps there, and they get filled in when new meetings turn up, but that's the bones of it. Any Comments, questions on the meeting schedule? If not, it will end up in the recommendation as. John, you've got a question on the meeting schedule? No. Oh. Okay, nothing, no one. Oh, Carolyn, meeting schedule. So if you two over here go off and Carolyn, come on. Just, I'm looking at the appendix summary of survey results and it's got Thursdays are retained as the main meeting day. 80% said yes and 20% said no. But I understand now we've gone to Wednesdays. <coughs> and then, of course, subsequent days, Tuesday or Wednesday, is 40% Tuesday, 40% Wednesday, 20% Thursday. But I'd suggest that there's a bias in that because um, everybody said yes to Thursdays is the main one. So the subsequent days, they obviously wouldn't say, you know, there would only be the 20% that said no would have put the subsequent day as a Thursday. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, that was the, certainly the results of the uh, survey. However, um, through the workshop, and the debate that ensued, our councillors uh, acknowledge that Thursdays is often a day, um, particularly for the mayor and sometimes myself for other meetings, regional type meetings, and that it um, is not a uh, not, not not the best day upon reflection. So while the survey results suggested that, the subsequent consideration um, agreed that um, a change would be preferable, and then the consensus. Uh, was really around the Wednesday and having the Thursday as the alternate day. Hence the recommendation. Yep. Yep. Okay, there's a recommendation in front of us, one, two, seven. And uh, Councillor Floon, you wanting to move? Yes, I would like to move that um, Council accepts recommendations one through seven. To me, uh, to, this is a huge improvement on whatever structures have been used in the past. I mean, this is a direct result of our experience of going through COVID, where all committees were suspended and we were meeting month, monthly. Weekly. Even, I mean, weekly, even if we did look like the Brady Brunch. But to me, the bit that gives me pleasure is it cuts out one layer of bureaucracy. In other words, rather than having a com everything going through a committee structure, before it comes to council, uh, under this structure, we no longer have to talk to the monkey, but we direct talk to the organ grinder, and the things come straight and direct to council for a final decision. We are also meeting frequently enough that if a report comes up from um, officers that we do not agree with or it requires some small point to correct, a fortnight is not a long time for that to go back to be corrected and then passed at the next meeting. To me, this is a huge improvement, and I guess we'll be one of the first councils to do it, and it'll be interesting to see how many others follow us. I'll go for a second, uh, Councillor Lovett. I'm happy to second it, and I completely endorse John's comments, and, and also with the more likelihood of more frequent workshops if we do have issues... Um, and they're open to the public, I think it's a, a good way forward. I fully support it. Great. And um, our neighbours, Selwyn, use this system. So uh, we're not the first, but... Um, yeah. <coughs> Stuart? Thanks, Mr. <coughs> Thanks, Mr Mayor. I'm a little bit sad to see the demise of the committee structure. I know it's an extra layer, 
But this year, the committee structures have been hamstrung for the amount of information they are allowed to present. It's, what we're going to have to do is make sure our briefing activity days are more than an hour or two to briefly discuss what this management, what what yeah, what management are proposing to do or have done. With the committee structures, we perhaps delved a little bit deeper into, I mean, c contracts and sort of things like this. I hope if we just have a full council every fortnight, we don't brush over a lot of management decisions that we would like to know why they've done or what's coming up because ratepayers ask it, why did the council do this or that? And unless we've been briefed, it's very difficult and embarrassing for us to know exactly what's going on. So I go along with the majority, but I will be watching um, briefings to see that we still get the full information that uh, we're entitled to as councillors. Councillor Mackay. Sorry. Um, Mr Mayor, councillors, um, history shows that those that hold the information actually hold the power. Um, I'm actually very encouraged that we're moving to this new system. I think the committee structure has, <coughs> like we had an example this morning, um, there's something on our agenda that is no longer there because it wasn't passed. Um, this system, we will all know that in the future going forward. I'd sound a warning, having experienced portfolios for five years somewhere else, um, i just sound a warning, why go there? Because I actually think that lessens the information going to all councillors. It uh, concentrates the information and the ideas of how the decision was made to a smaller number of people, where it should actually be to all councillors, in my opinion. I would actually like to um, show my thanks to the fellow chairs of committees. They're going to make this possible. As one, I can talk and say that the running of council is much more important than any hierarchy a councillor may have by being a chair of a committee or the remuneration. Very happy to see the remuneration go back to us all dividing up equally. I think it will work well. Wednesdays, um, thank you for the background music. I said thank you. <laughs> um, <coughs> no, 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 goodness. Um, Mr Mayor, uh, Thursdays and Fridays have for a long time in this council, ever since I've been a part of this council, a real bone of contention for mayors and chief executives that have to represent us at bodies such as mayoral forums, rural, provincial, and sometimes zones. Um, please stick to the Wednesdays. Don't try and, because Thursday's a bit spare, um, slip something into Thursday. Keep it to Wednesdays if it's going to be Wednesdays. Um, and I think we'll manage all the better. So thus, I fully support and encourage all councillors to vote for these recommendations. Councillor Cameron. Um, at the risk of um, <coughs> preaching to the choir, I also support this. I think um, Councillor um, Wilson's comments, the flip side of that is everybody has the insight into each of the particular uh, structures of the committee, like you had the infrastructure committee this morning. I'm not a member of that committee, so I couldn't comment or vote or pass anything on that committee. So when it came to council then, that was sort of rushed through and I didn't have the background to make any remarks at council on that committee. Um, so I think the flip side of your comment is that we are all empowered and we all have equal access to information and we can all have a unique perspective on particular topics as they come to council. And that would be my yeah, my understanding of this. No further comments. I'll make one comment. I'm in favour of the uh, recommendation. It does put more work on the mayor because he gets to chair every meeting every two weeks. But um, that is what it is. Um, but that's OK. And um, if this motion is passed, I'd just like to thank the chairs for the work they've done in the last year. Um, you're perhaps in a minute or so or less going to vote yourselves redundant from those chair position, chairing positions. And um, 
it will and your salaries will drop, but your counterparts beside you will lift and all be on an equal footing. But um, which is um, going to be okay as well. So if there's no further speakers or write a reply, Councillor Flint. Um, Push a button. Oh. Sorry. Just picking up on Councillor Wilson's point, I do agree with him that I, there shouldn't be any lack of information coming to the full council uh, over and above what's uh, already going to the committees, I would have thought. But... And uh, this will take effect on the 1st of January, I think, is, is, uh, is the date we have. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? C carried. <laughs> <laughs> that was a delay in the signal, in the, vi in the video. My hand going up late. It was four. <laughs> carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Well, item number five, Citizens Advice Bureau Interim Legal Structure. And clear. Welcome. Anything further to add to your reports? Or do you like questions? Questions. And straight to questions. Councillors, it's detailed report. Obviously, no questions. Someone like to move? I'll move. Um, I'm I'm happy to move. I'll get a second, and then we'll have the. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. uh, Councillor Cameron. Now you can speak to it. Thank you. Um, happy to move this. I think it's just ticking the boxes. Um, initially, um, CAB Mid Canterbury was to be umbrellaed by Community House, um, but it's now seemed that. CAB New Zealand um, will umbrella them. I think, um, and I don't know whether it's in the, I can't remember if it's in the report or not, but it's the first time in 19 years that a new CAB has gone out on its own, so um, it's quite significant, and they've already set up um, the offices in Community House and will be a tenant, so it's a great thing going forward. Thank you. Thank you for that. It is a good initiative, and... Um Certainly will be good. Any further speakers for or against the motion? Councillor Falloon? Just a question. So basically, pretty much, we're moving the ownership of it to CAB New Zealand. Um, does that mean that any money that they ask for from council will go to CAB New Zealand rather than just staying locally? Or how does it work? <coughs> Any future application uh, for funding will, will be obvious who is applying for it and who it would be granted to. The purpose of this report uh, was that Council had already granted the seeding money uh, but not to CAP New Zealand who, who have become the umbrella organisation. So this report is simply about um, reassigning the money already granted. Uh, any future applications will be considered on their merit and the party who applies will be obvious and it will just um, fall into place. Councillor Cameron, are you speaking for or against the motion? Uh, for, for the motion. Um, I think also uh, most citizens advice bureaus are sort of managed by volunteers on their board. They're in a corporate society and I think this is intended as only a short term thing to get it set, sort, set up quickly and then ultimately it will go back to being supported by volunteers you know, that are on the board. No further comments, no further debate. I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Carried. Against? Carried. Thank you. So that takes us to the end of the open part of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Uh, thank you to the media. A couple of items there which will get tidied up reasonably quickly, I'd imagine. So we'd like to move and move into committee. Councillor Cameron, Councillor Brown, all in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you.